Hi guys, welcome to Pretty Good Gaming, I'm Henry, here's Gaz. Get ready for your daily dose of news. We've got the latest on the potential PlayStation 5, an indie game explosion drama, and of course, your daily nuggets. But first, here's the latest on Microsoft's acquisition of developer studio Obsidian. A report by respected games journalist Jason Schreier says that Obsidian Entertainment, the studio behind Fallout New Vegas, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and more recently, Pillars of Eternity, is in the process of being bought by Microsoft. According to Schreier's sources who have knowledge of the acquisition, the deal is 90 percent finished and is a matter of when, not if. Obsidian have been an independent studio since they were founded back in 2003 and despite almost going out of business in 2012, have remained both a successful studio and loved by the gaming community. This news may be hard to swallow for many who have watched companies be acquired by Microsoft over the years only to be shut down when Microsoft can't find use for them anymore. The acquisition shouldn't exactly come as a surprise however, at E3 Microsoft boasted the independent companies that they had acquired, including the developers behind Forza, We Happy Few, and more notably Ninja Theory, the devs behind Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. All of these now Microsoft-owned studios are most likely working on next-gen titles, which will perhaps provide the next Xbox with a strong launch lineup, which the last one was certainly lacking. Some fans are apparently really happy about the idea. User Sharky Elzirod said on Reddit, I'm hyped as shit to see an obsidian with financial safety and no need to do random shifty mobile projects or weird Russian games to keep the lights on. However, reaction to the news has not entirely been positive, with some people voicing their concerns. User Lozzle said, Goodbye Pillars and goodbye Obsidian. In a few years, they'll make one or two games from Microsoft that don't sell 69 million copies and get a 95 on Metacritic. It was a good run. User Master the Hero also chimed in. Rip Obsidian, the game dev company that could never catch a break despite having critically well received games. I still haven't forgotten about their big budget Alpha Protocol disaster or how horrifyingly buggy Fallout New Vegas was. Yet, despite their glaring flaws, I had fun with both games. A buyout from Microsoft can only mean microtransactions and Obsidian games being available throughout the Windows Store. Not sure what the future is going to bring for them, but I wish them the best of luck. Jason Schreier did reach out to Obsidian for a comment on the story, and a spokesman for the studio had this to say. Unfortunately, we don't comment on rumours or speculation, other than to say that the Rumours album by Fleetwood Mac still holds up. Regardless of how you feel about Microsoft buying Obsidian, it looks like Obsidian are set to go the their own way. <laughs> Go your own way, right? Because that's a yeah, Fleetwood it's, it's Mac a song, song, right? It's the it's... only one I know. So understandably, the reaction to this news has been mixed to say the least. Some fans are unhappy that their beloved Obsidian will only be publishing games to the Xbox and, the, and Windows 10 from now on. Other people are concerned that Microsoft have a track record of shutting down development teams. Other people saying that they want Obsidian to remain creatively free to do whatever they want and not be like told what to do by the big, big ups, big ups, is that even a thing? Big ups. By the big ups at Microsoft. Higher ups. The higher ups. Yeah. I'm not sure that Microsoft will be dictating what Obsidian do. This is part of the reason that they're buying up so many of these development studios recently. One of those acquisitions was Compulsion Games, who made We Happy Few, and we spoke to the devs of that recently, and what he said was, giving us complete freedom to work on whatever we want to work on in future. And I think that Ninja Theory said the same thing when they got acquired too. So let's just hope that Obsidian are free to do what they want and they're, they're able to be creative and without jamming in microtransactions for the sake of microtransactions like so some other big publishers do to their dev teams. Let's just wait and see. Well, they're not even bought, they didn't even buy them no, yet. It's they're not even gone through, it's, only it's 90%, 90%, right? Just because it's 90% doesn't mean it's gonna go all the way. These things fall apart all the time. Things just don't work out, cogs don't quite fit together. This could be really beneficial, especially if they've got this creativity because they then get that extra funding and just more resources to build bigger and better products. One thing's for sure, Obsidian are not gonna miss being independent and being, like they nearly went bust a few years ago because of money issues. With Microsoft being there, Microsoft have got a lot of money. Oh right? yeah. They've got loads of money. Obsidian are gonna be in a, a strong place here to, like Henry said there, to produce like the AAA game that they've got the potential to do. Hopefully they'll be given enough time to finish the games, unlike what happened with Fallout New Vegas because that was rushed out the door, which led to like all the bugs and all the criticisms that it had at launch. With Microsoft acquiring them, that means that in the next generation of consoles, or even the tail end of this one, we might be able to get some more Xbox exclusives and Microsoft branded stuff, which uh, they're in desperate need of because PlayStation just keep pulling further ahead. So got Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon, Days Gone's out next year, Death Stranding's out next year, and Microsoft are 
just tailing behind. They need they need something. And if they can't do it this generation, they've definitely got to push for it next time. Yeah, I feel like this whole thing is gearing up towards the next generation because yeah. it takes two or three years to make a video game right from scratch. So with all these new studios that they've got all lined up now, Hopefully, they're giving him the, de the dev kits for the yeah. new PlayStation 720 or whatever it's going to be called. PlayStation 720, you said. Did I say PlayStation PlayStation 720. Yeah, maybe that won't happen. Maybe, maybe, well, you never know. That, maybe like, they do it. Maybe they'll do it just to. Just yeah, to that fuck, would be fuck with well Microsoft funny. PlayStation 720 all the way, all the way around. I wish they had the balls to do that. I wish they had the balls. See, balls because 720. That that's a, a ball, right? Yeah, it's a reference to In going the, around, right? Yeah. Ge geometry. See, yeah, it'll it'll comes, comes full loops. circle. Another protractor <laughs> jokes and degrees and shit. Another protractor joke. <laughs> protractor. Only, only the best gaming news here at PGG. All right, guys, you better be ready for your daily dose of news now because we've got all kinds of things going on. But first, you may have to wait a little longer for Black Ops 4 due to a mandatory 50 gigabyte day one update for the boxed version. That's even after the 55 gigabyte install. However, UK game retailer Game will be selling the game a day early just so that people can get the patch downloaded ahead of the official launch. Black Ops 4 also got a new multiplayer overview trailer before the game's released this Friday, 12th of October. The classic PlayStation franchise Medieval celebrated its 20th anniversary yesterday, which served as a Nice little reminder that there is a medieval remaster in the works. PlayStation VR is celebrating its second birthday with a sale. It was also announced that Borderlands 2 VR will be hitting the system in December 14th, but there is no word yet whether Oculus Rift or HTC Vive versions will be happening. Indie darling Stardew Valley is coming to iOS later this month with transferable PC saves, with the Android version following soon after. Pokemon Go will be seeing creatures from the Sinnoh region according to a very lovely teaser video. BlizzCon is set to feature not one, but two panels all about Diablo, suggesting there'll be big news for the franchise this year. Alert Metal Gear fans, MGS2 and 3 HD have been added to the Xbox One backwards compatibility list. It was announced that Left Alive, Square Enix's mech-based shooter, which is being worked on by Yoji Shinkawa of Kojima Productions and Metal Gear Solid fame, will launch on March the 5th for PlayStation and Windows PC. Indie office puzzler 7 Billion Humans from developer Tomorrow Corporation is coming to Switch on October the 25th. It was revealed that in Red Dead Redemption 2, disabling the minimap will change NPCs' dialogue. They will instead be the ones providing you with directions to your next objectives. As if this game can get any cooler. Imagine the NPCs, like, he's like, oh shit, where do I go? I've got no minimap. The NPC goes, it's that way, it's down that track. Yeah. You dipshit. I hope, I hope they, hope they, uh, <laughs> you yeah, I hope they, you know, throw in some sort of insult at you as well, because you should know where to go, right? Get on over there, dag gum city folk. And spitting, uh, chewing tobacco out. Out. Yeah. Nice. Employers rocks. Can't wait for that. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. The deluxe edition for the Resident Evil 2 remake was announced. Features include a reversible cover to focus on Leon or Claire, alternate skins, which are Easter eggs to other zombie fiction or previously unused Resi content, and the Samurai Edge pistol. Plus, there's a DLC pack which lets you swap out the soundtrack for the original. It will cost $10 more than the base version. Following an interview at Variety with Dan Murray, president of Skybound Games, it was revealed that Skybound are still yet to secure any of the original Telltale game devs to help them work on The Walking Dead the final season, despite rumours to the contrary. Overkill's The Walking Dead PC beta began yesterday. The game is a cooperative first-person shooter and is due out on November the 6th on PC, with PlayStation and Xbox versions coming on February the 6th in North America, February the 8th in Europe. But when does the beta start? Um, yesterday. No, that's not what you said, right? But a beta starts yesterday. Yeah, so when's the beta start? Never, because it's not a word. <laughs> you really threw me there. I was like, but I just, I just said it. <laughs> Trying to make me look like a dick. That's it for today's nuggets, so check below for the links in the description so you can follow up on all these little stories. Let's move on. After weeks of rumours, Sony have finally spilled at least some of the beans on their next console. In an interview with Sony boss Kenichiro Yoshida at Financial Times, it has officially been announced, to no one's surprise, that they are working on a successor to the PlayStation 4. Yoshida also said, quote, At this point, what I can say is it's necessary to have a next generation hardware, which tells us that Sony's next console will have some pretty decent kit. It's not been explicitly referred to as a PS5, but that's the most likely type or given their understanding of how numbers work, unlike with Microsoft and the Xbox One. Xbox One. 360 works because it's a box. The first one's a box, and the 360 it, it's round, so it's not a box and it's innovative. That's why 720 would make sense because then it's it's a ball. That would be the logic. But they're like, no, we'll go for one and have this connected TV bollocks that no one wants and uses. Right. Hey, you feel better now. I, I do. Chest. It's. <laughs>
stupid business model and hasn't worked and PlayStation are nailing me this year. I'm not even a Sony fanboy. I was yeah, Microsoft. Yeah, right. Not well, a Sony fanboy. Wearing a fucking Sony exclusive <laughs> shirt, right? Microsoft's Phil Spencer already confirmed to Eurogamer at this year's E3 that the team who developed the Xbox One X are currently working on their next console. Take note that he said consoles, plural, one of which is likely to be connected to Microsoft's recently announced cloud-based gaming thing, Project X Cloud. Video game streaming also looks to be the next big thing. At least the industry seems to think so. With Project X Cloud running trials and Sony's PlayStation Now service gaining more titles, as well as the Google browser version of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is currently in testing. In Eurogamer's interview, Phil Spencer also said, backwards compatibility remains an important selling point for Xbox. Microsoft currently have the edge when it comes to backwards compatibility and want to continue with it in their next projects. But as we mentioned in Monday's video, it looks like Sony are looking into this too with a new pattern. The pattern refers to a new method of texturing older games for new enhanced displays. And while the information altogether is very sparse, the key takeaway from this is that the next Sony console, be that the PS5 or whatever else they're going to call it, is definitely on the way. So keep your eyes peeled for an announcement at E3 2019. That being because there's no PSX this year, which usually happens in December, which is really cool last year because we learned a lot about The Last of Us Part 2. And they're not doing it this year, which, which is sad. Such a letdown. Pretty sad. But so many quality exclusives coming out uh, next year as well. And they, they didn't really show very well this year at E3, did they, Sony? They just had like four big games and we were all like, oh well, it'll be alright at, at PSX because they'll go into... Di no PSX this year! What's going on, Sony? Nada. Sort your shit, shit out. <laughs> This does fit into the gaps between previous console generations, so we're probably due one. PS4 is still doing very, very well though. Currently at over 82 million units sold compared to just 38 million for Xbox One. Well remembered. Yeah, definitely well remembered. Not looking at the script. If the PlayStation 4 is doing so well, I don't know if there's that much urgency to kind of jump the gun with the PlayStation 5. I mean, it'll still sell amazingly, but do they want to... Do they want to crap on the progress of the PS4? Because they can still stretch it out for a little bit longer. Yeah. Every game that they release now, they've got a potential 82 million people who could buy it. Next console generation, it's all up for grabs because uh, nobody has the console when they launch the games. They need to develop this hardware, but they're in no rush to push it out the door, which is... Weird. I think it's kind of the opposite for uh, for Microsoft though, because they definitely need their next one to be a big hit. Because Xbox One wasn't a failure; still sold oh, like 38 million copies, but it's just nothing compared to uh, to PS4. So they've really got to nail the next one. Sony have a bit more flexibility, a bit more option, a bit more option, a few more options. That's better. Got a bit more option, haven't they? Better yeah. England. <laughs> that's well, good England. That is really good. I speak. You nailed England. England. <laughs> the indie space shooter Elf. Of Elf. I'm on it again. I, I practiced it's this before we started. Word. Called evolution. Like evolve and innovation, innovation just smack together. Evolution. Blur. It's pretty simple, dude. The indie space shooter Evolvation was a massive hit on Steam last week, reaching a peak concurrent play account of 170,000. Now you might be thinking, Evolvation? Why have I never heard of that game before? Well, there's an interesting story behind that. The game launched back in February 2017 and evidently failed to find an audience. In order to try and boost awareness of their game, the two-man studio Hyperroots gave 10,000 keys away completely for free. Unfortunately, this backfired as they began to find that these keys were being sold illegally through third parties. In an effort to stop their game being exploited by grey market channels, Channels, they banned all keys, unaware that this would take away access to the game from legitimate owners. This led to the game being review bombed on Steam by angry players, giving of it. Ha! You got it wrong too, you dickhead. <laughs> I feel really smug now. I love the balls of calling me a dickhead. I like it. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. Giving Evolvation a very negative score on the Steam marketplace. Despite contacting Valve three times to restore the keys, they refused each time. So what did Valve do instead? They made the game completely free to play. As Evolvation is a multiplayer space shooter, the sudden influx of new players snapping up the now free game overloaded the servers and left many unable to play the game altogether. The concurrent player numbers have since leveled off to a more manageable 50,000 peak players of the last 24 hours. Hyperroots say they are now working to upgrade their servers. However, due to lack of in-game monetization, despite the 170,000 player peak when the game went free, the developers have only made a paltry $100 on the game since launch. That's gotta be a kick in the, kick in the balls, right? You get 170,000 people playing your game, and you only make $100 off it. This goes to show, right, the free-to-play model is probably a really good option for a lot of 
indie devs or a lot of games who want to get noticed, right? You make a game free to play, you monetize it with cosmetics or however you want. I don't care about monetization in free to play games, it's take it or leave it. It's microtransactions and full price games that I've got the beef with. But for free to play games like this, and like Warframe is the prime example, right? You give a game for free, as long as it's good enough, people will play it. 170,000 players because the game went free out of nowhere and they've got no way to monetize it now. Maybe that's a lesson there somewhere. You should just make it free to begin with and just sell microtransactions on the side. It's a lot better way to get your, your game noticed and to make money. $100. He's got to be kicking himself, yeah, right? right? That's it for your daily dose of gaming news. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. If you want to be notified when that video goes live, hit the bell on this video. And on behalf of Henry and I, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Ta -ta. You just got There's not many big ups from me. <laughs> There's tall neck over here. <laughs> see, you get it? Trying to make me look like a dickhead. But the Yanks like it. They say <laughs> oh, it right. Oh, the Yanks are laughing that up, aren't they? <laughs> well, the Greeks don't even say it that way anymore. They say Vita because the symbol isn't a B. It's pronounced like a V. So we're all wrong. Love me some bollocks.